My name is Olivia and I'm a clinical counselor at Community Charter Elementary School and I have with me Maddie. Hi there, my name is Maddie and I'm a clinical counselor at the Puck Silmar Complex. And today we're going to be presenting a fun quick slideshow on how to best support kids with ADHD. So how the brain works. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and it causes differences in brain development and activity um, that affects attention, self-control, and the ability to sit down or sit still. Um, kids with ADHD may have a harder time focusing, so they get easily distracted. They might have a harder time calming their body and may feel restless or fidgety throughout the day. They might have a hard time with decision making, so they make impulsive decisions or have difficulty with waiting and patience, or emotional regulation. So this is difficulty calming down after getting frustrated and can be quickly irritated or frustrated. Okay. So behavior management. It's really important for children who have ADHD um, that you establish consistent rules um, and appropriate consequences for behavior. Um, really consistency is key. So we wanna have the same rules and the same appropriate cons consequences um, in every scenario. We wanna encourage and reward good and appropriate behavior. So if your child does something like maybe he says, please and thank you, um, you wanna reward that with some verbal praise. You know, oh, really good job saying please and thank you. Um, also, you can reward your child with an item, like for example, time on the iPad, um, or even a break, you know, we'll take a break from schoolwork for a little bit and go on a walk outside. Those can all be good and appropriate rewards. Um, we don't want to reward inappropriate behavior, though. If your child is acting out, um, maybe throwing a tantrum, we do not want to give them uh, the reward that they're seeking for that inappropriate behavior. Um, furthermore, we want to provide age appropriate and direct explanations if they don't get rewarded. So we can say something like, you know, I see that you're really upset right now, but I'm sorry, I can't give you the iPad until I hear you have a calm voice, right? So we want to be really clear um, and explain why they might not be getting that reward that they're seeking. Okay, you guys also need to establish what is going to be considered acceptable behavior and what's considered non-acceptable behavior. Of course, every household is different and they're different in the ways that they function. So together as a team, we should be working towards deciding which behaviors are acceptable and unacceptable. First and foremost, expressing anger or frustration through positive communication. So that's what we're going to be focusing on versus engaging in physical aggression when feeling angry. Again, like Maddie was saying, it's really important to be consistent. Um, not being consistent can cause a lot of confusion with kids, especially kids with ADHD. So if one day you're really, really strict on not engaging in physical aggression and you go straight to a timeout, um, and the other day you watch them physically be aggressive, but you don't do anything. It's giving them the message. They can do whatever they want. So it's very important to be consistent. Also keep the rules simple and clear. Reward children for following the rules and establish a token economy or a reward system. This is a great visual um, to help kids see exactly the positive things that they need to be doing and keep encouraging them to do them. So rules versus flexibility. It's very important that parents practice patience with children with ADHD. Um, it can be pretty tiring for the nerves sometimes, especially if your child is exhibiting a lot of uh, tantrum-like behavior. Um, but remember that everybody makes mistakes and kids with ADHD have a lot harder time adjusting to social norms and rules. It can be very difficult for them um, to have to follow the rules and really be on top of their game all day. So we need to be forgiving that they are trying the best they can. Um, we do, again, want to reward that good behavior and discourage destructive and inappropriate behavior. Um, but it is important that we're not going to be too strict um, with the consequences, right? The consequences should be right-sized for the behavior that they're displaying. And not every inappropriate behavior needs a consequence. Sometimes it's better to pick your battles. There are some instances 
places um, where you would, especially for safety concerns, you would want to be really firm that that behavior is not acceptable because it's putting um, you in an unsafe situation. For other things, you know, if they're spending an extra five minutes on the iPad, you know, maybe we don't need to be too strict with that consequence. Managing aggression. Physical aggression should never be acceptable and it's not something to be flexible on. So like Maddie had been saying in the previous slide, to pick and choose how strict you're going to be. If it's, again, don't cry over spilled milk. If it's something small like a tablet time and they're five minutes over, it doesn't need to be a super strict consequence for that. But physical aggression should never be acceptable and the consequence to that should never be flexible. It should be consistent and it should be as a, at a relative importance. Um, you should be able to provide alternative ways for your child to manage their aggression or frustration. Not everyone expresses their emotions the same way and so it's really important to be mindful on the ways that your child expresses with them. Maybe that's a great conversation starter to have with your kids. Um, some people don't like to be hugged when they're sad and some people do and those are conversations you can have with your kids to help best support them in their time of expressing their emotional needs. Um, taking a timeout versus going into a timeout. That's really important too. So instead of throwing your child into timeout, uh, let's say they broke a rule or they didn't follow the appropriate behavior, as opposed to saying go to timeout, instead propose the idea of let's take a timeout. It offers them a positive reframe to a not so positive experience. So it allows them time to calm down, think about their actions, and it allows you to calm down as well, as opposed to bad behavior, time out, and I'm going to excuse you versus I'm going to give you time to calm down right now. Um, so this should be used as an opportunity for your child to cool off and think about the inappropriate behavior. Oftentimes, too, kids that are just sent a time out don't think about their, their inappropriate behavior. Instead, they're thinking, I can't believe mom just sent me to time out. Um, so again, that's a great opportunity for them to think about how to better change their behavior in the future. Ignore small and disruptive behavior. Don't reinforce attention-seeking behavior. If they're across the room and they're throwing something to get your attention, do not give them their attention. Of course, if they're throwing something that could break or harm, damage somebody else, definitely intervene, but if they're throwing a crayon across the room, just ignore the, the behavior because they're doing it to see if they can get your attention. Um, again, destructive, abusive, or intentionally disruptive behaviors should be addressed. Um, if they're doing inappropriate aggressive behavior or any inappropriate behavior at all, it should be addressed. Uh, I recommend addressing it maybe when you both have had time to calm down. So you can't fight fire with fire and to be able to sit down and be calm about it and talk about it. Um, definitely don't sweep anything under the rug. That's not going to help with consistency or to help you and your child manage their ADHD behaviors. Um, so definitely have a conversation and be open-minded about it as well. Helpful tips for success. Um, so create a structure. Uh, routines are so important. Make a routine that's easy and direct. Here's a great example um, of a kid's daily schedule. So something you could fill out for in the early morning, mid-morning, etc. cetera. Um, we wanna establish rules for meals, homework time, free time, and bedtime routines. Um, so whether those rules are, you know, we have to sit at the table when we're gonna eat a meal, or, you know, we're um, gonna spend our free time partially as a family, and then you'll also have some free time on the iPad. Um, again, consistency is very important, and being really transparent with the kids, being very clear. These are the rules, so they know what they're expected to follow. Um, include simple daily tasks in the schedule, such as make your bed, help set up the table, clean up after you play, pick out your clothes for tomorrow. These are all things um, that the kid can do to also increase their self-efficacy and to feel like they're really contributing to their family as well. Um, again, so we're going to break the tasks into small manageable pieces. Um, so for here's a great example of a morning routine you know there's different small tasks within um, the morning 
right? So in our to-do list, we might have eat our breakfast, get dressed, brush teeth, pack lunch, um, you know, and check for homework in our backpack or something like that. Um, also, when we have color coding, it can be very easy for the kids with ADHD to follow that. It's more engaging and more fun. Um, and so we also want to break up homeworks by topics or duration of time as well. It's very overwhelming to just sort of have a solid homework block without, um, you know, a, a break or without changing up the topics. Maybe we do science for 15 minutes and then we're going to go on and, you know, do math for 15 minutes. Um, and it's always good for you to know which subjects are most triggering for your child as well so that we can appropriately manage those behaviors. And that's also where a token economy could come in handy as well. Um, so if they're supposed to be sitting down and for a full hour doing homework, and it doesn't have to be a full hour of math, but let's say they're switching between subjects and given 20 minutes per subject, after completing each task, depending on the how difficult the task is, maybe reward and encourage your child with a token to help keep their motivation up and to continue finishing the tasks. Simplify and organize. Make things simple and direct. Too much information or too many tasks at once can really overwhelm your child and possibly cause triggers for behavioral outbursts. And that's something that we want to avoid as best as possible. Of course, there are days we're all human that we're going to react, but keeping things simple and direct and organized will help to decrease the smaller frustrations that build into bigger frustrations. Um, make a separate space. So create a separate space for your child to do work. Maybe you could create something that resembles a classroom environment, make a cool kids office. Um, you can be as creative as possible and get them involved in creating their space too, because it makes them feel really empowered that this is their workspace. It makes them feel motivated and um, what's that word I'm looking for? Independent. <laughs> it makes them feel independent as well. Um, so keep the area neat and organized with supplies that your child may need. So to also limit distractions, which will be on our next page, but make sure that they have pencils, paper, erasers, maybe if they have a trash can for scraps of paper, anything that they may need. Limit distractions. So environmental rearrangement is a great strategy in helping to limit distractions. Oftentimes, if our phone is sitting in front of us, we're likely to pick up our phone instead of working on our homework assignment or our work assignment because it's right there and procrastination is a killer. Um, so definitely do some environmental rearrangements. Get rid of video games, any fidgety toys like uh, fidget spinners or anything like that. Um, I will say, if your child tends to react negatively during certain subjects and they need to release their steam, have a stress ball as an option. If they start feeling like they have anxiety with math, have a, a stress reducing fidget toy on hand, but deliver it with rules before you give it to them. We use this if and only if we start feeling anxious or stressed or overwhelmed. Um, and if you find yourself using it as a distraction, then it needs to go back in the drawer or back with mom or dad, grandma, grandpa. Removing toys, games, the TV needs to be turned off. Some kids can work well with it. Some kids with ADHD cannot. Um, so please be consistent with that to help limit distractions. So taking breaks, this is so important. Kids with ADHD may need breaks frequently. That's normal, that's okay. We should be encouraging that as well. Um, you know, in addition to working hard on assignments and tasks, kids with ADHD are working hard on their own impulse control and attention. It requires a lot of mental energy for them not to engage in those behaviors, for them not to act impulsively. Um, so it's important to reward that as well when you notice that your child is doing a really great job controlling their impulses and sustaining attention, especially with something like schoolwork. Um, so time periods for breaks does depend on the situation and the child. Um, 15 to 20 minute breaks are great for recentering if we're feeling really dysregulated in our emotions, very overwhelmed. Um, it's important that we do things to help the child take care of their body, such as eating a snack, um, laying down for a minute, 
going on a walk, maybe to get all that excess energy out. Maybe we just need to run around for a little bit. Um, or playing a quick game. Maybe we just need what's called a brain break. We just need to have fun for a minute, play a quick game. You'd be surprised how quickly children with ADHD are willing to go back to the task at hand if they've had the proper brain break. Um, so small five minute breaks can also help decrease frequent frustration. So when we're doing a homework assignment, you know, if a child is having trouble and is stuck on a math problem, we need a five minute break just to stretch, put your heads down, you know, maybe play with some Play-Doh, just get your mind out of that kind of stuck headspace. This can be really helpful. So to encourage, you know what, it looks like you might need a brain break. Should we take five minutes and just play with some Play-Doh? That would be a great thing to support children with ADHD. Absolutely. Okay. Encourage different learning styles. Not everyone learns the exact same way as you do. There are different types of learning styles that include visual learning, auditory or musical learning, verbal, physical, logical, social, or interpersonal, which is in solitude. Um, I personally am a visual learner, so it helps to have cue cards or visuals, pictures that can help me create an image in my mind to help retain the information. So with your child, any child, and with your child with ADHD, encourage a different learning style. Some may benefit from an out loud thinking. Um, so if you hear them kind of asking questions to themselves, you don't need to jump in and answer it for them. That's their thought process that's happening and their learning style. So they're trying to retain the information by asking questions out loud or talking to themselves throughout the assignment or the task that they're doing. Okay. Encourage activities. Physical activity is such a great way for your child to exert their energy. I'm sure you've noticed after, you know, playing a sport or taking a nice long walk, um, their chi your child's behavior will probably start to improve. Um, physical activity helps with decreasing impulsivity, improving concentration, and stimulates the brain in a healthy way. So even if it's just, you know, five minutes, let's run around the couch, right? That's a great little brain break that will encourage them to utilize physical activity as a coping skill. And hopefully later on as well, they can know, you know what, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I need to take a walk. So it's teaching your child also how to regulate their own emotions and behavior. Regulate sleep time. Lack of sleep can make it more difficult to focus and it can possibly increase hyperactivity or restlessness throughout the day. Um, so with that, in your schedule that you will be making with your child or with your partner or anybody else, set a scheduled bedtime and bedtime routine. This also goes back to color coding. So maybe blue is for bedtime because you're supposed to be calming down. Um, and whatever you typically do for bedtime, create that routine for them. I also recommend limiting caffeine and sugar consu consumption close to bedtime because that will increase their hyperactivity um, and their insomnia so they won't go to sleep. And limit screen time close to bed as well. So a lot of times people fall asleep with the TV on or they're playing games and that's not allowing their brain to kind of turn off and calm down to be able to properly fall asleep and have a good restful sleep through the night. Um, sleeping aids, consider using a white noise machine or a quiet sleep music. Um, noise machines come in different sounds, so it could be like the ocean waves crashing, birds, um, a fireplace crackling, any white noise, a fan, an oscillating fan is really helpful as well. Um, it allows them to kind of just turn off their senses and just relax. Blackout curtains are another thing too, if you have street lights that are causing them to be distracted. Um, a weighted blanket, this is helpful because it creates a sense of calmness. The weight literally calms them down and it helps with anxiety. Or aromatherapy, lavender is good for sleeping. Um, there's different calming scents that will help un unwind them and let them calm down to go to sleep. So being patient, right? This this is really important. It can be very frustrating to have a child who's exhibiting a lot of problem behaviors. It can. Um, and there are times where your patients might wear thin. That's okay. But just as a gentle reminder that it's important, you know, to be patient with your child and to believe in them, really to have faith that they have the capabilities to learn how to manage their behavior, to learn how to regulate their emotions as well. 
Um, so it's important that we be consistent uh, with our, our rules that we've previously discussed, um, be consistent with our rewards-based system like we previously discussed in managing this behavior. Um, also to be optimistic, it, understanding that, you know, with each intervention, with each thing that you're helping your child with, you're helping them to manage their symptoms of ADHD. You're actually teaching them how to self-suit, how to self-regulate so that later on, you know, they might not need you for that. They can actually do that themselves. Um, so remaining positive and encouraging, keeping it light, and especially praising them for good behavior. When they do something that you're impressed by, tell them. Give them a compliment. Wow, I really loved, and especially to be specific with your compliments. So I really loved the way you asked for a snack so politely, right? So instead of just saying good job, we're going to be specific with how we reward with praise as well. Calm yourself. This can be hard work. Parenting is hard work, especially parenting with someone who needs a little extra support and assistance. So um, along with being patient with your child, it's really important to be patient with yourself. This is a learning process for you as well. Engage in activities that you like to do. So a lot of people are like, oh, find activities that you could do with your family during quarantine. Maybe you're all playing a board game. That's really great and that's awesome for positive communication styles and creating a sense of family bond, but it's also really important to find things to do by yourself if that's what you need. And it's okay to say, I kind of just need an hour of alone time. It's totally okay. It's totally acceptable. We all need our alone time as well. Um, so take a break from your child if needed, go in the closet, and eat some licorice if that's what you need, have some popcorn, and don't be afraid to speak up and say, I need time by myself. Seek supportive services for yourself. So whether that be parenting support groups with kids who have ADHD or other parents who are working through this as well, it can really be helpful to find a support group in a community that understands what you're going through. Seek support through friends and family. Again, this is a really hard time in general. Um, so find apps. There's um, House Party, WhatsApp, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom. There's endless amounts of social platforms that we could be using to help connect with one another. So it's really important um, to find that and to ask for that if that's what you need. Seek professional help. Uh, if you notice that your child's behaviors are above what you feel like you can manage with these interventions that have been put in place for you, consider finding behavioral therapy for your child or other supportive services. So there are places that do behavioral therapy that can work with your child and regulating emotions, regulating anger, managing stress. And they're all there to help support you during this as well. And to support your child and to teach your child tips and tricks as well. Seek professional help for yourself if you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, anxious, or depressed. You are not alone and there are professionals there that will help you during this time and outside of quarantine as well. Calming and mindfulness resources. So there's two apps that I've linked here, the Calm app and the Headspace app. I'm, I've heard really great things about it. It can help recenter. Um, it doesn't take a long time to complete this, five, 10 minutes. And it really allows you to have time by yourself to just decompress and just to be with yourself and, and focus on something other than what's for dinner tonight. Oh, I have to update his schedule and the laundry's building up. So it's really for you to be able to have your time to be able to calm yourself down. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you guys so much for coming. And Maddie and I are going to stick around for any questions or comments that you guys have. Thank you, guys.